What's good, YouTube man? It's your boy Young Dub coming at y'all with yet another video here, man. We got another update on the channel. Uh, we got another unboxing to go. Uh, y'all know my deal, man. I try to cut stuff open to make it easier for the video, man. Uh, so last night I actually did an unboxing video on this Tempco 3 out wire. Um, hey, your boy forget to, forgot to hit the upload button, man. I'm slipping. Uh, but yes, I did an unboxing video of this Tempco uh, 3 out wire, uh, which is some welding cable and... Uh, Y'all know me, man. I say, hey, if it's going from the front of the car to the back of the car, it's got to be welding cable, man. So now, shout out to my man, Julius Washington. My man is down there in the A state. That's my home state. Uh, but yet, he hit me up a while ago uh, via DM on Facebook. It was like, yo, man, you know, if you got some wire laying around, uh, as far as the wire band and whatnot, uh, let's hook up and do some. Uh, maybe you can send me some wire down there. I said, hey, man, you know, I usually would, man. But uh, unfortunately, my wire bin, uh, backup stash, whichever way you want to call it, the junkyard, hey, it's been depleted. Uh, so I was like, yo, unfortunately, I ain't got nothing in there other than some scraps. Uh, but right now, uh, I am working to replenish that. Uh, so that is the basis of this video here. Uh, let's go ahead and unbox, man. I was going to do an explanation, but... Let's get to the products, man. That's what everybody wants to see. Uh, so, if you don't know, you know now. Your boy's been PRV crazy lately. Uh, so they sent me some more um, free goodies as far as uh, with the order. They sent me some marketing material. Matter of fact, this will work out perfectly. So, if you've been around the channel uh, in the last couple of weeks, you see me doing an unboxing of these speakers right here. Uh, the 6MV550 FT, uh, which is their mid-bass speaker. That's what the MV stands for, the mid-bass uh, forte. Uh, hell of a speaker, 6-inch, 8-ohm, 2-inch voice coil, 275-watts uh, RMS, frequency response. I guess they're putting in as far as what it can play. They're saying 90 to 7,500 hertz on a website in order for you to use the recommended full power handling, which is that 275. Uh, they got you recommended to cross it over at 95 hertz, which I might go a little bit higher than that. But uh, hopefully you can see that right there. I did buy those speakers. And to protect those speakers, or at least um, keep them from getting poked in at least, uh, I bought the PRV grills. Uh, so you can see that right there, 6.5 inch loudspeaker grill. Uh, the screws are included with this, man. So I may or may not... Uh, open these uh, but there's that so y'all know the deal man let's throw this over here four speakers equals four grills all right so i may or may not open these man y'all know how i do it. if i'm not ready to use it at that given time i usually don't open this stuff plus i got those speakers back in their boxes and those jokers are heavy however the reason for this video, uh, like I said, I had depleted my uh, wire stash and in order for me to replenish it, I took a chance on this company, man. Hey, known for speakers, Brazilian, the whole nine, whatever. Everybody's, hey, if you're trying to get loud, get PRV or DS18. Yes, I'm gonna sneak that in there. Uh, but I don't know nothing about this company when it comes to wire. We're about to find out. Give me just a second. Let me get this stuff out of here, man. All right. Matter of fact, I'll just throw this box out the way. All right. So now, <laughs> what you're seeing in front of you is yes, uh, some PRV audio zero gauge, man. So uh, for somebody like myself, when it comes down to running these high power systems. Um, at least what I would deem is over the top, especially when you go to like a car audio shop, they're like, oh man, just get a five channel, 1200 watts, thousand watts, you know, maybe 400 on the speakers, 600 on the sub, you're good to go. When you start looking at 5,000 watts, 3,000 watts, 3,500 watts, eight, AK, uh, in this case for me, will be an AK last year. Went with the Wolfram 7,500. It is now branded as a 9,000 watt amp because even when it was the 7,500, it did over 9,000 watts certified. So uh, anytime you're looking at running something like that, 
you definitely got to be able to have you got to have the cable that's able to deal with that type of current that you want to run through it man so when it comes to me you see what it is i'm ofc 100 percent oxygen free copper uh shout out to my man high five vega he is mr cca I don't mind the CCA. I think CCA is perfectly fine as long as you know what you're doing with it. The problem with CCA wire, nine times out of 10, somebody's buying that CCA wire off of Amazon. If they're buying it off of Amazon, or just, oh man, it's 2000 watts, and now, you know, I got this 2000 watt Hyphonics amp, and I'm good to go. Problem with that is, that's 2000 watts max. Same way with the Walmart wire. Walmart uses a Scotch kit, and man, don't let me tell you all about stemless and uh, tax season. Anytime I go to Walmart right now, man, I, I, I'm the I'm the guy. Maybe I may not use their uh, audio equipment, but I just if I'm in there, I like to go take a look and see what they got. Which, as a matter of fact, right now the Walmart that I last went to had a Soundstream bass boost piece in there, man. So I might grab that and just do a review of it and take that joke right back to the store, man. But. Uh, Walmart carries the Scotch kits. I can't even, man, those Scotch kits been flying off of Walmart stands like hotcakes, man. The shelves can't keep them in there. Everybody, yeah, man, give me that 1200 watt Scotch kit. And the base head in me wants to say, hey, man, that don't get me wrong. It's decent wire. However, it's 1200 watts max. You see in those big bright letters, 1200 watt uh, amp kit. And in these itty bitty letters down under, it says 600 watts RMS. Most people don't know what that means, but hey, it's not necessarily up to me to teach them. So especially when they come with that attitude, I just say, hey, you know what? I was trying to help you out, man, but uh, I guess I'll leave you alone. Go outside and blow your stuff up, man. That's on you, which honestly could burn your car down, but that's a whole nother topic. So if you're going to be around the channel, if you've been around the channel, y'all know my plans right now. Uh, I got a Sundown SFB 8000 watt amp. Um, they're super efficient doing a budget build that's the reason why i'm not going korean this year i'm trying to keep some um i don't know i, I don't i honestly even don't know uh don't even know when in my head what that dollar amount is but i keep saying i'm going budget so yes i'm going budget so when you see this welding cable over here uh when it comes to getting some zero gauge wire compared to this down for sound wire uh, as far as cost this costs a whole heck of a lot less than um, that down for sound. So the budget route to go is welding cable. And not only is it a budget route, it's also the proper route to go um, when you want that wire to be quality and last. But let me stop talking and get on to this PRV wire. Matter of fact, I'm gonna tilt this down. All right, so you see right there in front of you, PRV audio. This is two watt or double zero, like you see right there. Two watt or zero zero, 100% oxygen free wire. So, hey, <laughs> I've been grabbing everything from PRV. Uh, like I said, my bone yard has been depleted as far as my wires. So, in order for me to replenish that, I decided to go ahead and get a 25 foot spool of some two watt wire from PRV and I don't remember how much wire this is supposed to be a one out. Um, but based on their one out wire, it looks pretty good. Um, obviously, the guys that are sponsored by PRV or just go crazy as far as buying PRV, uh, you talk to them, they say, oh, yeah, man, PRV wire is, you know, it's top of the line, and you might want to try it out. So I decided to try it out. I wanted to see, because I honestly, I don't want to take the spool down. Um, I wanted to see if there's an end. There is an end of wire in here. Hopefully y'all can see that right there. However, I still don't want to take this out. Right here is my Temco welding cable. Stuff out the way, man. I keep thinking y'all can see this and y'all can't. So that's my 3 old Temco uh, welding cable. Um, obviously, they say it's easy flex, heavy duty. I'll say this: it's heavy duty. Ain't nothing about this flexing easy. 
This right here is down for sound. This is some easy flex wire. That I could curl up pretty good, pretty easy. This PRV uh, seems to be the same deal. Flexure up pretty easy, man. So yes, man, I got some clear down for sound. Got some, I don't know, matte black PRV. And then I also got this welding cable. Matter of fact, that welding cable in is sticking out. So uh, like I promised, I was looking at doing a comparison video. The jackets are the biggest difference, man. So this 3.0 welding cable, hopefully I can get this in the camera frame. So y'all see how thick, this is the down for sound wire. This is your 3.0 welding cable and this is your 1.0 PRV. I will say that. Now, uh, one of these guys, somebody had hit me on here was like, yo, uh, down for sound didn't have a lot of wire in there. so a whole lot of jacket on it. I 1000% agree with that. Uh, like I said, I mean, this is 3.0 welding cable right here. So maybe that's not a fair comparison. Uh, however, this uh, PRV zero gauge is a fair comparison because you can see just how thick that jacket is on both of them. And the PRV jacket looks to me right now in this camera looks to be just a tad bit slimmer than a down for sound. Uh, but it, the jacket could be the same size and just have that much more wire in there, man. So, and uh, just to refer to my bone yard, I know I have pulled this out last night. This is a four old uh, Royal Exiline. Uh, so that, does have more wire in it than a 3.0, but that's to be expected. Uh, but as I was doing some digging around, I found some of my uh, GP Car Audio America wire. Now this is their zero gauge. Uh, so let's take a look at that. Same deal, it's squeezed in there a whole heck of a lot tighter, but Based on my eyesight, uh, just from eyeballing it, still looks like it has uh, more wire uh, than a down for sound cable. So that doesn't mean that this down for sound cable is a bad wire. It's just saying, hey, you know, you're paying for the name. But yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, like I said, man, I had somebody come through the channel was like, yo, down for sound squeezes um, a whole lot of whole lot less wire and a whole lot of jacket. I said, man, you know, uh, Sky High is a company that I run wire with. Um, they're somebody that I've been rocking with for the past couple of years. And I had this out. This is some Sky High power cable. Now, mind you, this is um, trimmed down because this is supposed to be a part of a build. Uh, I can't remember what, I, this might've been in one of my fuse holders, um, but clearly I took it out, man. So uh, yeah. I, hey, I'm, I mean, the proof is in the pudding, man. You see what it is right here. Down for sound, shout out to them, but that is a whole lot of jacket. Like I said, based on the eyeball, looks like more wire here in the uh, GP car audio. And what did I do with that in? Right here. I don't know, man. This PRV wire looks like it might be the, the top of the hill, man, so. Hey, uh, best I can say, look, man, I grabbed this wire to make sure that I was doing something to replenish my boneyard. Like my boneyard is literally down to this. This is some real excellent. Uh, yep, still got it on there. So this is some real excellent to watch. Uh, I can't really do a comparison on that because the wire is all frayed out. Uh, I could just do jacket thickness. This is some Temco uh, Wanot that's from God knows however long ago. And this is some GP uh, 2 watt wire. <laughs> Y'all see the condition of that wire, man. So uh, that's been chilling out in the bottom of a uh, Home Depot bucket, uh, along with a bunch of scraps of other wire. Like I got a nice little scrap of 8 dot or not 8 dot but um, 8 gauge wire, man. So got that. Got some scraps of four gauge wire, man, but I will clearly be uh, getting this stuff back up and going, man. So stay tuned. Uh, I got a lot more unboxings to do. 
Might be some wire, I don't know. But I know I got some more equipment coming, man. FedEx was supposed to be here today and uh, they pushed that to tomorrow, man. So stay tuned. Uh, there will be plenty more updates coming. Uh, like I said, unfortunately, when it comes down to the wire, uh, people don't necessarily care about it. However, in order to get your stuff planned, you need this. You need some 4 out. <laughs> you don't need that. But you need some wire to go from the front to the back of your car. Uh, get everything up and rolling, man. So make sure if you're uncertain about it, try to find that wire gauge, man. All you got to do is just put in, like go to Google and type in uh, like zero gauge or two odd or whatever gauge you're looking for as far as the amperage that you're pulling and the voltage, man. So uh, wire is not the most interesting thing in the world. However, it's very necessary. So you'll be seeing this a whole heck of a lot more. And uh, when I'm ready to get this up and rolling, uh, you will take a look at this. I'll probably do a more in-depth video of this two-watt wire just to make sure everybody's able to see it, man. So it's your boy, Young Dub. Y'all know the deal. Any questions, comments, concerns, hit me up. I try to get back to everybody. And clearly, all this damn OSC, if your mirrors ain't shaking, damn it, you got taken. You have a good weekend. It's your boy, Young Dub. I'm out of here.